Hello guys, today I want to review Dungeonborn from Mithril Interactive. I was playing the game over the last week in the closed beta and now the game released a public demo on Steam. Since I have around 24 hours in the game, I am ready to publish my first review. The game runs smoothly on the Unreal Engine and has a lot of similarities to the game Dark and Darker from the studio Iron Maze. Dark and Darker is my reference in this review because I know this game very well since the first closed playtests. The game can be described as a first person extraction dungeon crawler with PvE and PvP. You can play it on the solo map or on the 3 player map with your mates. There is also an arena mode where you can fight in a 3v3 deathmatch without losing or winning any gear. You can choose from different classes which I want to introduce now. For my class introduction I will choose the test arena where we find some damage dummies for our tests. An interesting fact is there are living and dead classes which cannot heal each other in combat. Here you can see my roster and I will show you the individuals in the class creation overview. Please feel free to stop the video and read at any time. We will start with the fighter which is a tank in the game. The fighter can use most non-magic weapons and has the skills Whirlwind and Rush. The passive skills are Vengeful Repost, Weapon Mastery, Restraint, Fired Up and Proficiency. The priest is the healer. He can also apply buffs to allies. The melee capabilities are limited and the one-handed maze has only a very short range. The skills are Divine Guidance and Divine Protection. The passive skills are Cleansing Rites, Resurrection, Recompense Faithful and Benediction. On the Rogue has the highest movement speed and is one of the best classes for PvP. Good players can outrange the enemies or engage while invisible. The skills Petrifying Poison and Vanish are perfect for Assassin gameplay and the passive skills Slide of Hand, Feather Foot, Ambush, Evaporate, and Toxic Bolts accompany those traits. The Swordmaster is a dangerous class and relies strong on the skills. Psionic Blades and Whirling Blade are for long and short range combat. The passives are Healing Scabbard, Psionic Marker, Deflection, Momentum and Crippling Strike. The Pyromancer is a Fire Mage with good ranged burst damage and AoE skill. Pyroblast and Fire Blast can melt enemies with ease. The passive skills Rekindle, Swift Casting, Ignite, Enhanced Combat 
Bastion. And Mana Search. There are two dead classes in the game. The Dead Knight, which is not available right now, and I cannot test it. And the Cryomancer. is another spellcaster with good AoE range damage. The skills are Ice Storm and Ice Barrier. The passive skills are Frostbite, Rinter's Wraith, Shattering Ice, Soul Freeze, Permafrost will ruin the days of your opponents. Gameplay-wise, the first thing I've noticed is the silent cues for enemy movement. You can easily sneak up on your prey and they will hardly notice you. The graphics have a more realistic approach compared to Dark and Darker. The 3D assets are more detailed and the textures show a greater variety, while the map design is more vertical overall. The enemies are very comparable to the ones in Dark and Darker and I even saw some assets that are exactly the same in both games. What do you think of the game? Does it have a chance against Dark and Darker? And where do you see its strengths or weaknesses? Please tell me in the comments below. will put some more time into the game and wait for the next updates to make a first conclusion. Thank you for watching and have a great day.